The origins of American democracy can be traced back to momentous political events in English history. For centuries, England practiced the idea of a representative government. This is the idea that people should have a say in their own government. This tradition of using a representative government dates back to the 11th century. Originally, England formed town councils to serve as local governments, but this eventually morphed into a bicameral or two-chamber legislature called Parliament. Parliament is divided into the House of Lords and the House of Commons. The idea of Parliament was to help limit the power of the English monarchy. Another political concept practiced in England was limited government. Limited government was the belief that government should be subject to strict limits on lawful use of power. In 1215, English nobles forced King John to sign the Magna Carta. This was in response to King John demanding nobles pay more in taxes. This was a significant move from the rule of man to the rule of law. Two major aspects of the Magna Carta that changed English politics were that the king could no longer levy taxes without the approval from nobles, and also the guarantee of trial by jury. Next is the belief in individual rights. Individual rights is the belief that the government should protect individual and property rights. King Charles I started to infringe on personal liberties. In response, Parliament forced him to sign the Petition of Rights. This required monarchs to obtain Parliament's approval before levying new taxes. The monarch could not unlawfully imprison people. The monarch could not force citizens to house soldiers in their homes, and he could not establish military rule during peacetime. After an intense struggle for the crown, in 1689, Parliament offered the throne to William and Mary. Parliament forced them to sign the English Bill of Rights. Under the English Bill of Rights, the monarch could not raise taxes without approval and could not enact laws without approval. The English Bill of Rights also gave people protection from cruel and unusual punishment. The English Bill of Rights established a constitutional monarchy in England. The British colonies were home to some of the earliest forms of self-government in North America. During the colonial period, colonists were able to experiment with different forms of government. Some of these early experiments are the Jamestown House of Burgesses, which had a representative government. The Mayflower Compact, which was the first constitution signed in the new colonies, guaranteed a society governed by majority rule and consent of the people. The Fundamental Orders of Connecticut was a set of laws that limited the power of government and gave all free men the right to choose people to serve as judges. And the Massachusetts Body of Liberties. This was the first code of law in New England and protected individual rights of men in the Bay Colony. As colonists moved to the Americas, they set up three different types of colonies. The first was a proprietary colony. This was based on a grant of land by the English monarch to a proprietor. A proprietor is an individual or group who was financed to start the colony. The proprietor represented the colony and could appoint all officials and make laws. Next, there were royal colonies. Royal colonies were directly controlled by the king through an appointed governor. These colonies had a two-house legislature. The upper house was appointed by the king and the lower house was elected by the people. Finally, there were charter colonies. Charter colonies operated under a charter, agreed to by the colony and king. These charter colonies enjoyed the most independence. The governments that were established in the colonies were heavily influenced by the thinkers of the Enlightenment. One major concept of the colonies was republicanism. Republicanism was a broad set of ideas about representative government that go back to Greece and Rome. The concept values citizen participation, public good, and civic virtue. All of these ideas were popular among the framers of the Constitution. The framers of the Constitution rejected monarchy and looked toward the representative democracy of Greece and Rome. Niccolo Machiavelli believed that the Republic could only survive as long as its citizens actively participated in government. They needed to put the needs of the Republic above their own, and that government should be of and for the people. Montesquieu believed that the power of government must be divided. This is our concept of separation of powers, in which we have a legislative, executive, and judicial branch. One of the most important influences on American government comes from John Locke. Locke preached the ideas of natural rights, life, liberty, and property. Jean-Jacques Rousseau created the idea of the social contract. In the social contract, people agreed to form a government to protect their rights. They have the right to overthrow and replace the government if it becomes tyrannical. In Economist Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, he talks about the ideas on how to protect economic freedom and property rights. Voltaire expresses his ideas of freedom of speech and religion. And then finally, William Blackstone. He wrote commentaries on the law of England, and he gave ideas on how to use the law to protect people's natural rights. This became basis for the law of the colonies, and eventually influenced the writings of the U.S. Constitution. 
As you can see, the concepts used in American government are not original and do not come from a single source. The framers of the Constitution drew their ideas from many different people and from many different cultures, allowing them to set up a government that they believe would protect the rights of individuals for centuries to come.